As always, a lot going on. Tonight on Feedback, we're going to be talking tonight with the, about the Clarion County Board of Assistants and Special Olympics Clarion County. It's all tonight on Feedback. Good evening and welcome to Feedback. I'm Mark Desidakis. As I said, coming up on tonight's show, we're going to be talking about the Clarion County Board of Assistants. That's coming up uh, in just a few minutes. And also a little bit later in the show, we're going to be talking about Special Olympics Clarion County and some of the events they have coming up in the next month or so. But first, as per my usual, I'm going to uh, and I'm going to rant and rave about something that you have been ranting and raving about, the general public for a while, um, gas prices. But I'm going to use a little bit of a lead-in uh, to do this. We're going to go to the tape. Actually, we haven't done this in a while. Um, it's been a while since we've actually aired something, and the reason we don't do it, you can see I'm wearing jeans, too. Um, but uh, we're going to show you a cl uh, story from um, Amy Ujadowski of TV5 News that aired last week about what some residents of Clarion are saying about the rising gas prices. Let's take a look at this. affects the local businesses, the community, as well as the university students. Residents who I spoke with today feel like the high prices are ludicrous. Uh, I think it's unbelievable how high the prices have actually jumped up. I mean, look at now, it's $1.53. I mean, we're not, not real rich around here, so, you know, it's going to college and everything. I mean, I live pretty far away from campus, and I really uh, need to drive up, and it's really starting to hurt on my pocket. Also. Bargain hunters, beware. Clarion's gas prices are equally as high as the national prices. That's a plus. I mean, I'd pretty, probably do less running around than I'd have to, I think. Price increase may not be over yet. Prices are expected to rise to $2 per gallon for the lowest grade. In Clarion, I'm Amy Ustrowski, TV5 News. All right, stop it there. Okay. So, what we've seen here is that residents, you know, talking about the gas prices. Well, read a couple stories about this over the last few weeks. First of all, a few weeks ago, in the business section, for, it wasn't on the front page, it was on the front page of the business section, then it was you know, buried even like in a small corner. And then the, the real meat of the story was actually after the jump. But they were talking about how even though in the United States, if we're paying a buck fifty, that's what they were talking about in the story, you know, a buck fifty for gas, across the rest of the world, they're not a buck fifty. They love it that much because they're paying so much for gas where they're at. And they're, it's like $2.40. And, you know, they're, they're fine with that. They would love a buck fifty because $2.40 is something pretty normal for them. And then, I thought, we're not that bad. I'm not really going to complain about it. I understand it's higher than we're used to, but maybe let's look um, in perspective. Also, uh, on the Sunday morning Yap Fest, uh, I was watching, must have been this week, uh, with Sam and Koki, or whatever they're calling it these days, and George Will was on there, and I don't always find myself in agreement with this, but he made an interesting point. He said, you know who's complaining about these gas prices? There's people driving down the street in their SUVs, and you saw in this story, there was all these people in their SUVs driving around. Those people driving in their SUVs, which have the higher, you know, costs more for gas, drinking, you know, talking in their cell phone. There's money they're wasting that they could just wait to make the call. And then drinking their bottled water. Do you realize that the bottled water probably costs more a gallon than gas does? And you're complaining about the gas prices where you have, like, tap water at home. You can just take in a cup and, you know, anyway. So... I just couldn't, I, I thought that was so, that was a great point by George Will, actually. Um, but I thought it was just uh, very strange that we're all about this one. If you think about it, you've got to look at it in perspective. Look around the world. They're paying $2.40 for gas in some places. And we're paying $2.50. Um, just look at everything else that you're, you're getting. It's, 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 the economy's been pretty good, so you're getting, uh, you're getting your fair share. I think we can live through this. It won't be that bad. That's, uh, that's all I have for that. Uh, what we're going to do is take a break, and when we come back, we're going to be speaking about the Clarion County Board of Assistants after this on Feedback.
a.m. until 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. That's the Clarion Agway, located at 1130 East Main Street in Clarion. Phone 226-9270. I hang out with a pretty trashy circle, the circle that helps this circle. It starts when we recycle trash at home. It's completed when we buy products made from recycled materials. Check the label for something called post-consumer recycled content. Then buy the highest percentage of it you can find. Complete the circle. Call 1-800-CALL-EDF for your free buy recycle shopping guide. 1-800-CALL-EDF. How would you like to give hope to millions of the world's children? UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, is saving lives in over 140 countries by providing kids with medicine, clean water, nutrition, and education. With your help, UNICEF can make a huge difference in our world. For more information, call 1-800-FOR-KIDS. Thank you. Welcome back to Feedback. I'm Mark Despotakis. As I said in this segment, we're talking about the County Board of Assistants and Larry Klukin from the, the uh, Clarion County Board of Assistants joining us. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Um, what's your position there, actually? What do you do? What do I do? Uh, I'm the executive director of the okay. office. Okay. So this is, and this is a, a county agency? No, it is not. Oh, it isn't? No. The uh, Clarion County Board of Assistants uh, is one of uh, the welfare offices that there are one in each county in the state, although it's called the Clarion County Board of Assistants. It's actually an arm of the Pennsylvania Department of Public Welfare. Mm. And we're chartered by law to have an office in every county in the state, and this is Clarion County's office. So let's give us an overview of what you're actually doing at your office. What services are you providing? Uh, service we provide are comprehensive. Uh, when most people hear of the, the term safety net, that's exactly what we are. Uh, we're also called what you might call the agency of last resort. Uh, when people can't find anything else to help them in a particular circumstance is generally when they come to our office. Uh, our office handles food stamps for this county. It handles cash assistance, uh, medical assistance program, nursing home assistance, and to your last program, the, uh, your last lead in the fuel assistance program, mm -hmm. which happens to be booming right now because of the fuel, sure. fuel price costs. Uh, we also offer uh, counseling. We also can help uh, you file a social security or, or disability claim. We can help you find training. We can uh, help you find a job. We have various contractors that work uh, with us and for us. And also if you're uh, wanting to file for child support or something along those lines, uh, we can help you uh, through the, the county domestic relations office to obtain child sp uh, or spousal support against your, your ex-spouse if need be. How big of an agency is it? I mean, how many people you have working there? Right now, there's a staff of, uh, I believe, 36 wow. and one, one temporary and one person who's on, who's on leave. So uh, actually, right now, 37 is what our authorized staff is. Okay. So um, you're helping, I mean, in all these the laundry list of areas, um, is there maybe a certain group of people that you're seeing more, like, age-wise or or um, socioeconomic wise? The stereotype of the welfare office or the relief office or mother's assistance, whatever you want to call it, is that people are coming there to get a cash assistance or money to live on. We do provide, I don't want to uh, minimize that. But right now, that only accounts for one and a half percent of the business, so to speak, that we do in Clarion County. I think the thing that would surprise most people is that we off, we offer and cover 15% of the population of Clarion County Woodbridge. Various, there's nine or 10 or maybe even 11 programs we have right now. And it by far uh, accounts for the lion's share of the taxpayers' money that gets spent in this county is to provide this medical coverage. 15% and I believe the county population is around 46,000, so we're talking a large number right. of people. So you're, 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 you're a basically paid agent. It's just a lot, a, a lot of different things. It, and okay. it, it also depends on the type of program. 
their type of medical assistance and cash programs that are completely funded by the state. There are some county programs of which we assist in that is completely funded by the county. There's federal taxes that are The state of Pennsylvania chooses to use the food stamp program, which is not even a welfare program. Mm -hmm. It is uh, run by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, but we happen to have it underneath our roof, uh, mm -hmm. and we, we, we fund that. Uh, another little interesting, as long as we're throwing numbers around, uh, the food stamp program accounts for about a quarter of all worth of food stamps in this county every month. Hmm. So it is, it is something that I'm sure that the merchants are well aware of how much right. money is coming in. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not real familiar with, you know, how this is set up. Are people able just to come to you and apply for the assistance, or have they already done it through various other channels? That, that's, to give you an idea, is the easiest or the quickest or the most direct is we have what's called an intake department, and if you were wanting to see whether you qualify for any of these programs, or even curious to see what programs we have, we would urge you to come in in the morning. We opened up at 8 o'clock and start taking applications off. Hmm. Uh, we would ask you your circumstances and see what, what you were eligible for. However, uh, as I mentioned, med the medical assistance program, you could be hurt or sick and put into a hospital, and the hospitals themselves and some of the care, care providers, even some of the doctors and clinics offices, I wouldn't even doubt that your, your uh, college clinic office has applications on file mm -hmm. where they would fill them out, mail them to our office, and then we would contact you to come in. Uh, there are other, other uh, programs uh, like this, for applying for Social Security Disability that we get reports back from the Social Security office and then you could come in and we, we could help you with that. So uh, there are the, also if you were in a nursing home, nursing home also takes, the nursing homes in the county take applications and mail them or fax mm -hmm. them into us and then we oh, either, okay. either come out to see you or in, in your behest. So if someone wants to come out to your office, um, where are you located, what's the phone number? We're located, uh, well, they just changed it under 911, mm. but it's what you would call 68, Route 68, or 5th, 5th Avenue, or 5th Street Extension. Uh, it's called, which is coming from here, going out to the mall. We're lo located on the right, going, going up the hill. Uh, our office, our hours are 8 to 5 every day, Monday through Friday, and the phone number is 226-1700. And uh, Any time that someone would tell you or someone else, what we don't like you to do is to have somebody else tell you. We, we are paid to tell you whether you're eligible or not, and we can tell you right, right up front, usually within, within the day, what programs you're eligible hmm. for, and if you are eligible, we, we can get, get you uh, on, on, on track. And, and, you, and you have, you know, you, you, since you do have that long list of programs, maybe you realize, oh, I was available. I, I mean, I can get some assistance right. through this. Yeah. Okay. Um, I noticed you have with you, this just sparks something in my head, welfare reform after two years. What, you know, how is it going for your office? I mean, what changes have you had to make with the, welfare reform? The most obvious changes are is that uh, about three, about four years ago, uh, Congress drew up the laws and changed this from an entitlement program to a, uh, the cash assistance part of it, to a work, work type uh, right. in the uh, third year of, a fi of the five-year plan. And the way the program has changed is that in order to receive various types of cash assistance, you either have to be working 20 hours a week or unable, physically unable mm -hmm. to go to work. And th that's the only way that you can qualify if you're in work, living in with your grandparents or something. There's, there are some differences. but. Uh, what has happened is that the welfare rolls in Clarion County over the last three years have been cut by almost three quarter. Hmm. At one time, uh, there were close to 2,000 people in Clarion County on right now. Hundred. Wow. And that's, that's in the last three and a half years. Most of them uh, have gotten employment or child support or another source of income to help them out. A lot of them will help through training programs. The county has put through some training programs and are now employed. Okay. Um, we're out of time. Okay. And what's your phone number? 226-1755. Okay. The Clarion County Board of Assistance. Uh, Larry Goodman, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mark. We'll be yawning. Back. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. I'm talking about that. I'm looking at it.
not to pull through a grand line. Town Restaurant. Captain Loomis of Town Restaurant is located at 540 Main Street in Larian and offers dining as well as a nightclub. The restaurant and the nightclub are open seven days a week for your convenience. Call Captain Loomis of Town Restaurant 26-8400. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by Clarion Office Equipment. Clarion Office Equipment is located on Greenville Avenue Extension in Clarion. They can handle all your office equipment computer needs. They are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can call Clarion Office Equipment at 226-8753. It's not just about making plans, it's about making a difference, taking an interest, not just earning it. At Edward Jones, it's about more than investing. It's about knowing you. Edward Jones, investing in you and your dreams. In Clarity, phone 226-7896. Feedback starts now. And I said, you know, it wasn't a better name for a movie to come out to me to write the book. It would be a great book to have. And you can, uh, to get her book, um, you can also find it online. Well, and I have a feeling I'm going to be rather opinionated. People I know, so let's ask them about scheduling. Um, why, is it, why is it that students have such a problem here with? Tune into Feedback with Mark Despotakis every Tuesday and Wednesday night, beginning at 7 Cheryl Dietz, uh, the PR chairperson, and also two participants uh, in special meeting with them a little later. But um, Cheryl, let's start with you. Um, I, we've heard of special and we've heard of it, but maybe you give us more of a, of a maybe a dictionary definition of what Special Olympics is. It's been part of it more than But through the years, it's become more than that. It's a movement. Mm -hmm. It's a life-changing movement for the athletes that are involved and also for the people that volunteer and work with those athletes. Uh, Clarion County has a mission, and it's a mission to reach out to mentally challenged athletes. Mm -hmm. And the reason we keep saying athletes is that a sports organization that is there to give them year-round training mm -hmm. in many Olympic-type sports. Pennsylvania Special Olympics offers 22 sports to the athletes across the state. Clarion County offers nine of those sports, and we'd like to eventually offer two more this year. Okay, so when, when we say this, is this like one specific day that you're going and doing? Yeah. This is a myth that we would like to dispel. Mm -hmm. Most people think of Special Olympics as a track of field event, mm -hmm. and it's because it's probably the largest event that we have through the year. But Special Olympics is a year-round training program. Right now, as I speak, we offer basketball, we're offering bowling, we're mm -hmm. offering swimming, we're wow. offering um, equestrian. Really? As wow. well as track and field. Tuesday is basketball at Clearing Area High School. Wednesday, we have bowling at Ragley's Bowl Arena. And we also offer swimming at the university um, pool. And then on Saturday, we offer track and field at the University Stadium. And when I say offer, is we do training. And we offer athletes to go and compete at that track right. and field that you thought of. <laughs> they must train for at least eight weeks. Oh, mm -hmm. and that's done through, I mean, you have a program set up for that. And we have a program set up for that. Okay. All of coaches that come and work with our athletes are volunteers. They are certified. They give up maybe a, a Saturday, and they go and they're trained 
about mental retardation. Mm -hmm. They're trained about what is expected of them in a sport, and then they train for 10 hours with the athlete. Wow. So, you know, Clarion County is obviously, this is part of a larger franchise yes, then. We are part of Pennsylvania mm -hmm. Special Olympics, and Pennsylvania Special Olympics is part of Special Olympics International. This was created by Nish Shriver Kennedy. Um, she created this in 1963. She started a summer camp because of her sister Rose. Mm -hmm. She believed that mentally challenged adults and children need much more. All that they may have troubles with building skills in the academic arena, they are capable of doing much more than I can mm -hmm. even do as far as bowling and roller skating. Okay. Um, so how long has this been going on in Clarion County and how long have you been involved? Since the early 70s. I've been involved since I student taught in 1972 probably on a smaller scale. When I really got involved was probably about a little over 10 years ago, probably 12 years ago. I got involved and became a part of our management team. And I started helping with volunteers and then I moved on to PR chairperson. Because of my exterior, I prefer to stay <laughs> behind the camera and not in front of the camera. And so I got involved in that manner, not knowing that it would bring me in front mm. of the camera. And then I got very, very involved personally with the athletes such as Mary and Cody because they're known as global messengers. And what global messengers is they go out and speak to the public mm. and they're to, they're to recruit athletes as well as volunteers. And they tell about our program much better than I can even tell about mm -hmm. our program because they show what special needs for them. And I'm hoping by me being here today and bringing them with me that you'll invite them back to speak to the public. Well, you know, what, what has made some thoughts now uh, from them about okay. what Special Olympics has done? Um, the only sport you participate in, did you have them? Nine. nine. And that's all the that, count nine, so you all. And Cody participated in approximately six um, because he has Down syndrome. There's some things that you really have to be killed because of his spine. But um, Mary, what have you enjoyed about Special Olympics? What do you enjoy doing? Speaking to other people. She loves going out and speaking mm. because she's met so many different people. She's gotten to go to many different communities. Um, She's a PR sure. She spoke at um, Somerset, the skiing event, and she spoke to all of the sponsors. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's amazing what our athletes do. They say it better than we can. Mm -hmm. um, she also did something, was it two years ago or three years ago? Exciting. What happened to you? You became. Um, I mean, I went house bud in 97. Mm -hmm. And what did you receive in Harrisburg? Yeah, she was um, presented with Global Messenger of the Year. Mm, wow, so that's that's wonderful. And Cody came on board like two years later, and they go out and they speak as a team. Probably Mary's my serious side of the team, <laughs> and she's more my comic side <laughs> of the team. So. They really work together well. And and that's what Special Olympics is all about, is teamwork. Right. It's just like any other athletic tradition. Sure. Well, we're running out of time here, but um, two quick things for the uh, your team team volunteers, I presume. Yes, that's why I'm here. We're in dire need of volunteers. We need volunteers that are willing to work for uh, day events, like the track and field event that is April 7th, or the other coaching events. And they can call me home. I have an answering machine, and that's 764-3894. And I'm sure you'll probably put that up. For right, them I think they're see. putting it up right now. Um, and we need we need people that will be interested in becoming a part of the management team. On our managed team, that we call the Three Musketeers. <laughs> it's our events 
coordinator, our training coordinator. One's ahead of training, the other's ahead of competition and volunteers, and we're going to lose them. One is going to graduate school. You know what? We're like, we are out of time. Uh, that's, um, that's wonderful. You know, I salute all the work that you guys do. And Mary and Cody, thank you for joining us. Best of luck to you guys in the future. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Of the programming was made possible by Curly Tires. Curly Tires is located on Greenville Avenue Extension in Clarion. They offer a wide variety of tires to meet your car or truck needs. Curly Tire is open Monday through Saturday. Call 2267. That's Curly Tire. Phone 226 6657. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant to Restaurant. restaurant is located near Interstate 80 and Route 68. The restaurant is open daily 6.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. and from 4 to 10 p.m. Call 226-8850. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by the Pizza Pub. The Pizza Pub is located at 3006 East Main Street in Clarion and offers radio dispatch delivery. Call 226-8721. The Pizza Pub is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone them at 226-8721. stations are showing their boring programming. Only one station is bringing news coverage closer to home. Now I'll show you here first on five. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m., join the area's news leader, TV5 News. To regional, state, and national news. Plus, with our newspaper exchange partner, the Clarion News, teaming up to bring news coverage closer to home every Tuesday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Again, thanks to uh, Larry Gluten from the Clarion County Board of Assistants and Charlie from Federal and the Clarion County. Joining me tomorrow morning over at 917 WTV at 6 a.m. We're talking um, back season of the pond. We're talking um, with someone from HR Block and then join us tomorrow night for the special retelecast of when we had HR Block on tonight here on the back. Thanks for joining us. See you. Have a good week.